2020 mm. is definitely the year of the hyper naked yes. motorcycle. Yes. And a massive contributor to that is Kawasaki's new ZH2. So we've just been talking off camera. I think this is a hyper naked. <laughs> you think it's a super naked, a large capacity super naked? I don't, what is it? It's a good question. I, 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 I don't think anybody has kind of come up with the clear, true definition of what constitutes a hyper naked. But what I would say is if, you would, if we were talking top trumps here and, and, and you had your deck of cards and I had mine, and let's say you had the, the V4 Street Fighter and I had this, you're gonna beat me. That, that bike, like the Brutale 1000RR, makes in excess of 200 horsepower. Now on paper, this is 200 PS. I know I'm splitting hairs here, but that's 197-ish horsepower. And, and I think, and I know um, we don't wanna necessarily labor the point, because the last thing we wanna do is come over here and kind of pull the bike apart, especially as it hasn't even been ridden yet by anybody. But this is, this is significantly heavier than the other hyper nakeds that are going to be rolling out for 2020 this this bike tips in the scales i think fully fueled at 240 238 239 kilos which is quite a lot heavier than the equivalent hyper naked so what you're not taking into account though mark is the massive and i'm talking about massive amount of torque available and the fact that all of these bikes, certainly in my opinion, yeah. are bonkers anyway. Oh, they, they're nuts. You know, yeah. so whether you're talking like another two, three, four, five horsepower, this this bike's got enough power to rip your head clean off. <laughs> <laughs> and the torque available, right, and it, the fact that it's a supercharger, this thing is it is bonkers. It, there should not be, I'm sorry, the, 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 you know, this argument's sake, there should not be this amount of power available on a naked bike, because no, it's, it's bonkers. It, it's, to be honest, it's ludicrous that we're even talking. 100 foot pound of torque. torque. Yeah. I mean, it's the same as your average kind of family hatch, maybe yeah. more. And, you know, obviously a family hatch weighs a ton and a half. This weighs and a quarter told, of a ton or less and, than. And, and sometimes, you know, you put your family in it as well. Yeah. You know. <laughs> well, you can put your family in this, but we'll, <laughs> yeah. we'll, we'll, get, we'll get to that in a minute. I think, I think it's, it is preposterous, though, isn't it, that we're even talking about this idea of hyper naked. You know, yeah. if, if you go back five to ten years, you know, a bike that made 150 horsepower was incredibly high performance and pretty much... In, in its entirety, those were sports bikes and sports bike only. Now we're looking at nakeds. We're I mean, looking I at... rode that Z1000R. Yeah. And I tell you what, that, that's a bloody fast bike. Oh, yeah. And yeah. that's got 140. Yeah. And, 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 and of course, the, the most significant difference, and we've touched on it briefly, the torque. So the roll on performance on this bike, you know, we, I know we talked about how the V4 Street Fighter in, in Top Gear at 60 can out drag a, a Panigale. I bet you this thing is just. I mean, oh, be, uh, and yeah, yeah, obviously that. If you're into that lazy power, yeah, and and, and some people are really like that, you know, they don't have for <laughs> a rider, me. whack it in a sixth and just overtake anything. Well, well once, this, this, this is going to be the tool for and, you. And, and look, we haven't even talked about why or how, rather, that the Kawasaki achieve those types of torque figures. This this is a supercharger, a forced induction bike, a proper production induction uh, bike for the masses. Now, mm. you know, obviously uh, Kawasaki have been doing this for a while with the H2, with the H2SX, um, you know, but, but I think in, in some respects they are, they're, they're a kind of different market, you know, they're priced at north of 20, 25,000 quid, morning. Um, they, you know, this bike, 15, 15 and change. Now there is gonna be a H2, a ZH2 performance as yet, we don't know how that's going to be priced, and I'm assuming that'll just have a few more trinkets. But in principle, again, when we talk about hyper nakeds, you know, this this is the gateway bike, isn't it? You know, you, 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 once you've spec'd a Panigale, once you've spec'd a, a 1290 Super Duke R, and, and not, not, let's not even mention the Brutale 1000 RR at 15, dare I say it, you know, value. I'm, oh, it's, I mean, great. it's great value, actually, when you consider all that. And it's, well, not like it, it's not like it doesn't come with any spec as well. It comes with a great spec. Yeah. You know, not only are you getting, obviously, the engine performance, which we've talked about, but you are getting, you know, show a big piston fork. Yeah. Really good forks on yeah. the front and rear. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, it's got a Brembo M4 calipers. Yeah. That's a strong... Um, Strong setup, Strong yeah. caliper, and you know, to be fair, you'll need it with that amount of power and weight, weight. Yeah. you know, but it's still gonna stop really well. You yeah. just know it will. It comes with a really nice TFT. Um, actually, I've, I've sort of fiddled around with it um, uh, Also, yesterday. the switch gear on this is really, really switch nice. Switch gear is really nice. It has um, to be, comes though. comes with cruise control. Yeah. Comes with, um, 
uh, traction control. Yeah. Uh, comes with a I IMU, so you can uh, it, it can measure your lean angle yeah. sensor. Yeah. So as standard with the bike, also comes fitted with a quick shifter up and down. I think that's that's great as standard. You normally have to pay extra for that, or you are having to now. You know, there's it's quite a lot yeah, of yeah. stuff as standard. You yeah. know, normally you're having to like go up, okay, to the sport edition for that. But yeah. This thing comes as standard yeah. with that. Yeah. It's quite impressive. It is impressive. I mean. The jewelry's out on this bike, I think. I think what one of the things, aside from the fact, and, 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 and as, mu as much as I would say, you know, at 15, it does it does appear to represent some pretty good value. Still quite a lot of money for a motorbike, isn't it? Um, so, so I don't want to I don't want to throw all my eggs in one basket and 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 kind of take a take a definitive position with it. I think we've got to ride the bike before we discover what it's really all about. Because I I do think, although it makes monster power, the weight can make a huge difference in terms of the characteristics of the way the bike rides. Is it a sport tourer? Is it a sport bike? You know, I, Kawasaki are placing it as, I think, as a super naked. That, that's what that's what the spiel says. Um, and obviously when you look at all the marketing imagery and stuff, it's on track, it's tipped over. But I, I do think that they're, they're bridging an, an interesting gap between you know, sport tour, but they, you know they've got a big selection of sport tours. We're going to talk about the new Z1000 SX as well that's been updated for this year, haven't, haven't, aren't we? So, really just by, and of course, what we haven't talked about is the styling. Well, the way it looks really splits opinion, and yes. I, you know, when I first actually, I only actually saw the bike a uh, couple of days ago, basically, right. despite having worked all the shows. Yes, you know, you barely get a chance to um, scratch whatever but um only just got to look at it in the flesh because i saw it in the pitch and i thought god i don't know how to approach this do yeah. i come and ride it or bring me harpoon gun because <laughs> because <laughs> it's uh, it looks like moby dick on the pictures <laughs> actually when you come to look at it in the flesh it was like crikey have they sort of like widened it or yeah. something because actually in the flesh it's a lot sleeker it's a lot sharper in my opinion yeah and it might not be for everybody but actually i quite like the look the way you look i'm, I'm going to do my best to get the best visuals um afterwards that hopefully does it a little bit more, more justice. justice i mean look I, I think there's there's no there's no doubt that the bike in the flesh is 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 a, is a nicer looking thing than it is when you see it on images you also have to accept that because the, of the fact that the bike is a forced induction product, you know, and you've got that big supercharger, the packaging for a bike like this is very, very difficult well, it has to, to do. Be different because yeah. you've got air induction. You do, and, and you've got, you've, you know, what, what, what you'll see when you when you look at the bike in closer details, there are significant sized air intake on the left hand side of the mm. front of the fairing. So, and, you know, so you've got you've got to create kind of parity from one side. You know, it's it's got to have balance. It's got to have reasonable proportion. Um, I mean. I, yeah, it, it, it will split opinion, this bike. I, 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 I was really super excited to check this bike out yeah. in the flesh. And I've got to be honest, I still, I'm still not sure about what I think about its styling. Um, you know, there's an argument to say it might be a tad fussy, but, but actually the, the riding position, the bar position is very, very good. Um, and actually, one of the other things that I really like is it, it does feel very compact. You yeah, know, for a bike that totally. packs 200 horsepower, weighs in at 238 kilos it's actually his proportions are very small so you know and, and we can talk all we like about weight can't we but we also know having ridden multiple bikes of multiple different weights you can ride a, a bike that's 230 to 40 kilos and it, it, it's fantastic to ride what was your what was your gs yeah i mean you, you know? you're right there at 2 240 fully you know with a bit of fuel in it easily and, and what a brilliant bike to ride so yeah, yeah. you know and, you, and you, look at, at the end of the day we've both owned and ridden a lot of Kawasaki bikes. They know yeah. how to put a motorcycle together. They do, yeah, and, they do. And, and you can kind of approach this thing and just say, yeah, you know it's going to ride well. They, they will have um, engineered it as such that it rides well. Yeah. That weight will be, yeah, 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 you yeah. know, it's not all going to be sat no, on no, top because no, no. they know what no. they're doing. No, and you know. uh, good, I mean, good tank range as well. I think we're, ni we're 19, 19 litres. 19 litres, yeah. What are we going to do with that exhaust, Mark? Because uh, it is, it's chunky, it's like a, it's a bazooka. Chunky is one way of putting it, yeah. <laughs> chunky is one way. How, how, many, how many of the 238 kilos do you think that exhaust contributes to the weight of the machine? As? At least 200 of them. <laughs> it's, a big, it's a big unit. I don't know whether to use it as a bench. You know, look, jokes aside, you, you don't know how difficult it is to get a bike like this through the Euro 5 emissions test. Year. I'm assuming and I could be wrong here, and I'm sure if you're watching this video, please comment about this, because I, I, I quite easily be wrong, it's happened before. But with forced induction, you know, we talked about uh, how pretty some exhausts are, even under this new legislation, but 
I'm guessing that there has to be a fair amount of clever technology in this silencer to stop it from, from failing that test. Well, it's a team of engineers. <laughs> 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 That's what it is, isn't it? You've got a there's, team of engineers six in that. There's Japanese exciting. guys in there right now, <laughs> <laughs> all holding separate filters. <laughs> it is massive, though, isn't no, it? No, but look, you know, again, joking aside, it's a it's a really easy fix. You're just going to buy an aftermarket yeah, unit, yeah. whack yeah. it on, and jobs are good. And you you would have to assume again that I mean that is going to contribute a significant amount to the weight of this yeah, bike, it is, isn't yeah. it? 100%. It is. Um, but I mean, look, you, you can use it for so many different things, can't you? If we go into World War Three, well, like take you say, it to the grenade yard, launcher. You'll probably get, you take it to the scrapyard. <laughs> probably, probably pay get, for the bike. Yeah. So the bike's also fitted with Diablo Rosso three tyres. That is a really sports orientated tyre. Yeah. And that, yeah, it, it's going to handle really well from the point of view of it being fitted with that. So you're not going to need to worry about, okay, I need to upgrade the tyres. It's going to stick to the ground really well. Well, look, I mean, we, you know, we've made a point of, of I think every time we've spoken about a bike at the NEC this year, we've mentioned what, what tyre brand on, we've mentioned which tyre. Well, because tire. It's, so, it's so important. What's well, the only part of the bike that actually touches the floor, isn't it? <laughs> it so is. it is pretty important. And you've got to be careful when you're putting 200 horsepower well, into, a, into a bike, you know, you, it's got to stick to, to the road. I mean, and <laughs> incredibly important, incredibly yeah. important. And it's nice, again, you know, we, we've looked at KTM, we've looked at the BMW, everybody's putting on some pretty honky rubber on their bikes, aren't they? They're not yeah. scrimping, no. you know, they're not giving you some sort of middle of the range you know Pirelli courses are a very very good tyre yeah. and, and that it tells you about their intent doesn't it as well it says something it in terms of Kawasaki's approach with this bike so as always with a bit of luck and a following wind we'll get the chance to have a go at this uh, some point in 2020. Fingers crossed. So you guys you know what to do please press the like button if you like what we're doing here hit the notification bell and if you haven't subscribed to the channel make sure you do that as well and we'll see you for the next one.